Hi, my name is Sarah Nick Rivon. I am a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist and a critical care medicine physician at Virginia Mason Medical Center. And I'm going to be talking to you guys today about lung ultrasound. This is the second in a five-part series where we will cover the pathology of pneumothoraces and the evaluation of pneumothoraces with lung ultrasonography. In 2012, in intensive care medicine, there was an expert panel article that was released for the evaluation of lung ultrasound for different lung pathologies. When evaluating a patient for a pneumothorax, one of the key factors in lung ultrasound evaluation is assessment of the lung sliding. If a patient has absent lung sliding, there's a negative predictive value of about 100% in that patient population. Now, what that means is that if you do see lung sliding, then the patient does not have a pneumothorax. But if lung sliding is absent, there are other questions that you have to ask yourself and other portions of the exam that really need to be delineated in order to give a patient a diagnosis of a pneumothorax. This flowchart is from that expert panel article in intensive care medicine from 2012, trying to help guide care providers down the algorithm for the assessment of a patient for pneumothorax with lung ultrasound. If lung sliding is absent, then you move on to ask yourself if there is a presence of B lines. If B lines are present, then it is not likely that the patient has a pneumothorax. But if they're absent, then you go on to ask yourself other questions. Is there a lung pulse? Is there a lung point? We're going to cover all of these in this talk today. But I wanted to provide you with this flow chart so that you had an understanding of where this talk was going to go. In a patient with normal lung function, you should see lung sliding, this to and fro motion of the pleural line as is delineated on the left of the screen. On the right, you see no lung sliding. You see this bright white pleural line without that to and fro motion that you're seeing on the left. In fact, it seems that every time the patient is breathing, the chest wall itself is getting pushed up and you see the pleural line moving upward with the chest wall in that attempt of a breath and lung expansion. But you don't see the pleural sliding back and forth. This would be concerning for a pneumothorax. If you did have this sort of an image on your lung ultrasound, you would then go on to further evaluate it by putting uh, an M mode on that uh, bright white pleural line that you're seeing to see if there's actually a to and fro motion or not that you're missing with your uh, lung ultrasound uh, 2D assessment. Just once again, I want to show this to you, this lack of lung sliding. Now, if you went on to put M mode over that area where you didn't think that there was lung sliding, you would see the image where there looks like there is stasis. This is what we call the barcode sign or the stratosphere sign, where you really don't see that to and fro motion and that smudging artifact in the lower portion of your M mode image, but instead get this very static appearance of the entire uh, M mode, which means that there really isn't motion, and we call this the barcode sign or the stratosphere sign, something that you see in a patient who has a pneumothorax. The other finding that you will find often in a patient who has a pneumothorax is uh, this finding called a lung point. And the lung point is the point where the visceral pleura separates from the parietal pleura. It's the margin of a pneumothorax. I've tried to delineate this with the black arrow on the screen. That's the point where you see there is a portion of lung that is making contact with the chest wall, and then suddenly the pneumothorax in the anterior portion of the field causes a separation between the visceral and parietal pleura. This finding, if seen in the anterior lung field in the presence of A-lines, it is 100% specific for a pneumothorax. So let's show you what that looks like in actual real-time scanning. 
you see at the top portion of the, the screen here, there is this bright plural line that comes in and slides back and forth, makes contact with the top of the screen and then slides away. There's this point of contact between the visceral and parietal plural where you have this sliding and then it disappears and it comes back, disappears, comes back and you can see that very clearly in these examples of a lung point. I'm just gonna spend a, a few more moments here to show these to you again so that you have a clear understanding of what lung point would look like. Here you see that bright line and watch the arrow marker goes away and it comes back. This is an example of lung point. If a patient uh, has a lung point, then you could be rest assured that they have a pneumothorax. Another thing that you would want to look for if you did not see lung sliding and were trying to determine whether a patient indeed had a, a pneumothorax or not is this finding called a lung pulse. It's this rhythmic motion of the pleura adjacent to the heart. It's often seen in patients with consolidated lungs or poorly aerated lungs. And as you can see, it's almost a pulsation of the lungs with the beat of the heart. This is a finding that is absent in a patient with a pneumothorax. So if you do not see lung sliding, but you do see a lung pulse, it is less likely that a patient has a pneumothorax and more likely that lung sliding is absent for other reasons, which we will cover. There are a number of false positives when assessing for a pneumothorax. So what this means is that the evaluation of the lungs with lung sliding can be very helpful when trying to determine whether a patient has a pneumothorax or not. In that, if you see lung sliding, the patient does not have a pneumothorax. But if lung sliding is absent, there may be other pathologies that could be explaining this. Oftentimes, you will see an absence in lung sliding in patients who have ARDS. You'll see an absence in lung sliding with patients who have pneumonia or fibrotic lung disease. If a patient has had a pleurodesis in the past, of course, you would expect not to see lung sliding. If they have an acute asthma exacerbation where the lungs are very expanded and there's a poor ability to evacuate the lungs of air, then you could imagine that lung sliding would be hard to see. Especially in the apices of a patient who has uh, mechanical ventilation, it has high PEEPs or positive end expiratory pressures on the mechanical ventilation patient with ARDS, it would be much more difficult to see lung sliding. And in some cases, you really don't see good lung sliding in these patient populations. That would provide you for a false positive, which is why the absence of lung sliding is not where you stop on your evaluation for a pneumothorax. You then have to go on to ask yourself, does the patient have B lines? If they do have B lines, then they likely do not have a pneumothorax. Does the patient have a lung point? If they do have a lung point, then they likely do have a pneumothorax. If they do not have a lung point, then you ask yourself, is there a lung pulse? If there is a lung pulse, then they likely do not have a pneumothorax. If there is not a lung pulse, then they likely do have a pneumothorax. And you work down this algorithm in your assessment for a patient um, when you have suspicion for a pneumothorax. So this is the end of our talk on pneumothorax and the assessments of pneumothoraces with lung ultrasound. We'll continue in the next lecture to talk about pleural effusions. Thank you for your time.